this new session of Google Digital Garage Training. My name is Francois, and today I'm here to help you with building a CV, write a cover letter. And you see, there will be a lot more, more lot subject as well regarding how to find your perfect job. So as I said, my name is Francois, and I'm one of the trainer for Google's free skills program, Google Digital Garage. If you've never joined us before, welcome for your first session. We're going to explain you a little bit of housekeeping. And before that, just a bit about myself, right? Because you like to know who is talking today and why is he there? So I'm actually a digital consultant and trainer. So as well as having a background in online collaboration and digital marketing, I worked with lots of uh, corporations, big or small, in various places. I was going to say continent, really, in the past 20 years. And all I have gathered with my experience is that I really love to share what I learned. That's why I'm here today as well. And today you are in for a treat as well because we have a, our facilitator called Na in the chat with you. So I will explain you how all this works. So first of all, if you're having trouble watching this webinar today, it may happen, just click refresh for me, right? So maybe F5, Control F, Apple F, all this thing, Command F, to just refresh your browser and things should get better. Secondly, you have a chat. To join the chat and to really participate live with us today, you need to have a YouTube account. So click on the little login and then enter your email, your, your Google password, etc., and you'll be able to participate live. I will be asking you questions every now and then. So it'd be really cool if you can if you can actually participate, answer the questions. And you see that we are actually in a live presentation. So interactivity is going to be key. As you may know, we are running this uh, Google Digital Garage training as part of a large offering of courses. So if you would like to check out the whole schedule, then make sure that you see the description, the, the little information just under this presentation. You will go to the website and then you can see a lot more uh, schedule. So a bit of housekeeping, as I said, we have done this. So now let's get started with the, to the topic of today, build a CV, write a cover letter. So for some, the thought of uh, writing a cover letter can feel a little bit of anxiety, right? Nothing surprising here. We've all been there and I'm here to help you, giving you a methodology, even maybe a template, so you can feel a bit better when you get into it. So the team at Google, we have, uh, we have both written and read many, many cover letters over the years, and uh, we pull them all together and bring us, bring or build some advice in order to create some building blocks. So you see that it gets a little bit easier when you have the right methodology. So we're going to go through three steps. So it's not just CV and then cover letter, but also helping you to get ready for your job search. So as you know, the internet is very vast and therefore it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we'll give you ways of finding the right place, how to hear the market trends and therefore identify ways for setting your career goals really. Talking about career, you may want to already have more certificates in your sleeves. So you can join the free career certificate, which is um, provided by you by the, the Google Career Certificate. If you go to this website, which is just Google, so gwo.gle slash career set UK, it's going to come in the chat soon. You will be able to learn new skills and also get a certificate, which you can use already on your CV. We're going to talk exactly where to put it. So I'm going to welcome people in the chat. It's really nice to see that you have uh, started to participate. So welcome to Sarah, who is going to, uh, who is connecting from Pakistan. Welcome to Enya from UK. We are welcoming Na from Kenya. We're welcoming uh, Fana, I saw. So let's just carry on. We have lots of people watching. Just put your name, your first name, maybe your business if you want, but especially where you're coming, co connecting 
from. That's always really good for us to know. And the next question now is, think about this question. What are your career aspiration? And what does it mean really? So it means, what do you want to do? What do you think is going to be your next step? Maybe, maybe you are, you you don't have uh, you haven't started your career. You just fresh from university or you are self learning. You have an idea in your mind. So think about it. Can you just put in the chat what could be some uh, some of your career aspiration? An aspiration also may make you realize of inspiration. So we'll talk about this. Why do I ask? You this because then we can use it inside our next step of building a CV. So welcome, sorry about the pronunciation, welcome Heidi from Slovenia. We have uh, Sri Ram Siavash from Iran, India, Clement from Rwanda. Fantastic. Love to see so many people connected. Welcome, welcome. All right, build your CV. So let's turn, turn our attention to building exactly the CV. So the CV, you may have seen them if you start Googling it uh, and uh, just type, show me a model or a template of a CV, you can have multiple form of a CV, right? So what is the, the appropriate way? So we're going to give you the blocks that we figured out from the market that are really the one you need to have and why. So it's also thinking as the employer. Employer receive hundreds of CV per day we need to make life easier for them. So let's think about this. In the chat, write the following. So after you have thought about your aspiration, what is the primary purpose of a CV? What do you think is the point of a CV? So if some of you may think of uh, what kind of information I'm going to put in the CV. I've been told that I need to give contact information, otherwise nobody may contact you. So really for you, what is your conclusion? Why would you be requested to ask a CV? I'm going to check in the chat every now and then. What we do, by the way, is that we have some pauses within the presentation so that I can look at the questions and answer them. So it's the same for your primary purpose. You can also write them and then I just carry on and we'll see what the answers are and come back to it. That's not a problem. Great. So yes, we have uh, Rwanda, we have UAE, and uh, Mariam from UAE, Iran, Pakistan, UK. Amazing. Welcome, everybody. Okay, I'm going to stop doing the welcome now for the, the latecomers. Um, so what is the primary purpose for your CV? So introduce ourselves briefly. Of course, your employer doesn't know you, your future em employer, potential employer never heard from you so do you need to introduce yourself what else could we do do they know what you are doing not really so a short glimpse into our career perfect and yeah of course highlights and that's interesting to to say highlights because you may have a very long career you know some people are doing a lot of activities even if they are still very young so how do we fit everything in one cv okay Let's look at the actual definition before we get into this, uh, this uh, template. So the official definition by the Cambridge English Dictionary states that a CV is a short written description for, of your education, your qualification, your previous jobs, and also, that's something people will forget, your personal interest. So that you send it to your employer when you're trying to get a job, right? So a CV should really reflect your life experience and not just the jobs that you have had. Very interesting because it's the course of your life. It could be from birth. It could be from the last class that you attended. So we're going to see what details we can put there. First contact for with employers is the very first contact point that you're going to have. But whether an employer, a potential employer asks to see a curriculum vitae, which is a CV, or a resume, a resume, if we take the American uh, more, more inclined term, they are looking for one thing. They want a document that is very easy to read, succinct, and why you are the ideal candidate to invest their time, because they are the one who are going to pay you, and therefore their money. They're going to invest in you. You are an investment. Why are you the best candidate, the ideal candidate? 
So it seems to go beyond simply stating your work experience. Bear in mind that only 2% of candidates will make it to the interview stage, obviously, depending on the profile and the, the company. So you need to be really, you need to really make your CD, CV stand out by including additional skills and experience. You need to, how do you make yourself a little bit different from the crowd? So it's really important that you provide a summary of your experience, included the goal-oriented, right? and relevant information that are as authentic and as honest as possible. Authenticity in a CV really pays, but faking it doesn't pay. A CV that you read and it doesn't feel authentic, they will find out quickly. So what information should you include now? We identified three key elements. So that should help you so that you can see what uh, needs to be on a CV. And uh, of course, you can have other, other pieces of information that you should include. So basic information, opening summary, work experience, education, achievement, and then the skills and strength. So we're going to go through all of them and see even some examples that we give you. But as you know, there isn't a universally accepted template. That would be amazing. But on the other hand, it would be the same as having only one template for website. It would be a little bit boring, right? So CVs are all very diverse. And you may have for one vacancy, you may have the, the employer receive 50 CVs to read. But they only have a few minutes for until the next meeting. So how do we? give them all the information and go straight to the point. So let's go through that. Basic information first. Of course, your name, minimum, but especially how you want to be called, right? Um, your address and location, why is it important? Because they may have an impact regarding the commute, regarding visa, regarding how to, um, how to have an accommodation next to the office. Contact information, they need to definitely contact you. So make sure you put the right, the right number and the right email. You have to have, you can create an email especially for CVs. Make sure you, con you, you consult it as well. And then other info important information. So for instance, I was mentioning visa. If you have already a special dual nationality so that you can go to a different, just put it to the CV. That would be useful for the employer. If you have a visa, if, um, well, other information, some may include age or date of birth. However, there are no hard rule or, or fast rule for this. It's really up to you. It is your choice. It could be depending on the industry that you send your CV to. Some industries are going to show it as mandatory. Some industry will be absolutely open not to put any gender, gender not to put any date of birth as well. Um, for instance, if you have a driving license, that would be something that you can include. If you have a spatial license for driving something bigger, for driving or piloting something, just put it into the other important information. But of course, always adapt it to your industry, to the industry you're going to send to, so to the potential employer. And remember that you may have accreditation, portfolio links, a link to a brochure, something that you've done, just add it to the other information. So that would be at the top, right? Opening summary. Now we need to have two to three sentences that describe who you are and what you can do for the employer. So ideally, it has to be custom made for this employer so that it doesn't feel too generic because the employer is going to read that and say, like, oh my God, this is exactly what someone in my company could be doing. So think of it as the elevator pitch. If you don't know what elevator pitch, just do a Google on this. You'll see some real one elevator pitch who are usually less than two minutes, very brief introduction of a project of a CV or someone like this. An elevator because the elevator mo moves up and down and it doesn't take more than one or two minutes maximum. So one thing now to know, if you lack of experience, we are going to, um, you will want to highlight your skills and education in this summary. So you can put highlight the, the skills and education first. And for instance, you could talk about your unpaid work experience, your volunteer roles, um, your overall career goals and ambition. 
So you want an example, I'm sure. An example of a little um, two or three sentence uh, some opening summary could be, I'm a recent graduate of economics looking for analyst roles. I have experience working effectively within teams and leading projects, delivering engaging presentation and networking with others. I have completed two internship with, with, which helps um, to develop my, analytic, my analytical skills. And I have also volunteered as a treasurer for my local community center for the past two years. I'm passionate about finance and helping people to look after their money. So you can see that this one is really a hook. If I read this as a potential employer, I'm going to be like, wow, this person really has the energy, the passion, and it could be they could be someone I would hire for, for this role. So now let's talk about the work experience. Again, if you don't have enough work experience, just put your education achievement first, and we'll talk about a work experience as maybe volunteering work. So when we complete this section, the work experience, try to ensure that it is reverse chronological order. So it means that the latest work experience should be on the top and then you go reverse chronological. It just helps the reader with checking the very last experience and, uh, and then continue like this. So most recent at the top. Then you should say which company, job title and date. When the company is not that known, well, why don't you include a link? Because nowadays CVs are mainly electronic. So the person can actually click on it and go to the website of this company that wasn't that known by a potential employer. So list any work that you have done from the present to, the, to your first job. So your first job could be when you were quite out of school. So of course, is it relevant to this company, to this new potential employer? You have to see, you have to decide what relevance is going to make. Otherwise, you can just summarize all your little summer jobs and just say, every summer I was working for. I was carrying um, charity work in the past and I was at this and this, this, and this uh, charity. If the work was not paid, look to include a volunteer section as well. So you would have it as work experience, volunteer section, and then you will list all this. Okay, we're going to now explore the work experience so that you can do what you can do if you lack this experience, because of course it can be a bit like confusing if we don't have it. So of course you have education qualification. So list all your qualification and the schools and colleges that you obtain. You can do this in order this time, but chrono chronologically, that's fine, because you would say from the very first one, maybe HND, A-level, etc., and then you list all this until the latest one. When you complete this section, make sure that you have the date, the name, the location of the schools. Again, the school may not be really known by everyone, so just put the location and maybe the greater area of this or the country of the school so that it's more is clearer and understood. Um, you should include any qualification that you have, any achievements such as even health and safety qualification, first aid qualification. This is all in the education and achievement. Anything that is relevant for the role would be an advantage. Think of it of even um, adding qualification that you have with Digital Garage. You can add them into this. If you're looking for a job for the first time, since you are leaving uh, education, include this information above the work experience. So again, education and achievement will be above work experience. Let's talk about the skills and strength now. CVs, are, CVs and cover letters, they are not about tricking your employer to hiring you. So remember, being authentic, telling the truth is all about what they want to see in a CV and cover letter. So in order to represent yourself in the most efficient way, it's worth for the, to highlight the employable qualities. And you have many. Even if you haven't had a job yet, you do have many. So one of the tips to find out uh, what skills and strengths you may have, even though you don't have the experience yet, is to just take a test. There are lots of tests online. Some are free, some are paid with a little fee. Uh, the most famous one, to be honest, at the moment is, uh, or most popular, is called the Myers-Briggs. 
So Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is MBTI, link is coming soon. You'll see that when you answer a set of questions, it will give you a special type. And this type helps employers to know if you're going to be a good fit as well. But you can totally put it in the skills and, and strength. It helps uh, employers. Another way of doing is actually to ask around. If you ask your friends and family, you can ask them. You say, like, well, what, what do you think? Who do you think I am in a social group? What do I get at home? Do I accomplish things? And then you will find out that people call you a solution finder. They call you um, a happy-go-lucky, always positive person. That is really good. Positiveness is very much praised. So how does it relate to the job description? So remember that we're going to, you're going to read a job description and they are looking for someone. Try to take this job description and find or bounce back your skills and your strength so that it reflects to it. So later, so we're going to look at, uh, re at reading and finding job descriptions so you can have a bit more clarity as well. All right, showcasing our skills. When you apply for a job, it's really important to think about the skills the employers are looking for and to match their skills and ability accordingly. So that way you can ensure that you meet their needs. And the job is also suitable for yourself, right? So you're going to present yourself in the best light when, you, when applying for the job. It also means that you can identify the areas you need to work on. You can be open about this. We're going to look at the letter later, the cover letter. That could be something that you could add as well. Say, I am learning this and I'm going to make my best to fit this and that. So you can also say that you are willing to learn. So which type of uh, skills employers are looking for? Broadly, we'd consider that there is soft, hard, and digital skills. The soft one first is Things about management, about leadership, about teamwork, communication, but not just because you don't have to be a management, a manager to have soft skills. Soft skills could be that you are really good at talking to people because you have interpersonal traits and skills. Soft skills employers look for is things like resilience, leadership, as I said, but not just, communication, confidence, um, presentation skills, that's a soft skills. Being able to talk like this, that's also a soft skills. It's all about, I can get along with uh, a social group and in a company as well. Hard skill, hard skill is about maybe doing something in a different language. It's about learning a, a tool. So actually physically like brick and mortar is something that you have acquired for years. You are an expert into making chocolate. That's your hard skills. And your digital skills. So who here doesn't have digital skills? Well, surprise, you all have, because you all managed to be watching this presentation today on YouTube. Therefore, you have reached it already. You all know how to navigate the internet, how to use a mobile phone, how to use a computer. So how digital skills is something that you can show. Of course, we're talking about a little bit more advanced, but you can learn that because you can go to some website and learn coding, video editing, social media. If you're really good at social media, it means that you share with friends all the time, that could become a skill and you can actually highlight it. So skills that you could include on your CVs, things like the soft skills, remember. So soft skills are the one in gray. So we were talking about teamwork, project management, uh, networking. You may be really good when you go to parties, you realize that you always look for connecting people together. You like, you meet someone and you're like, I'm pretty sure that this person told me they need an accountant, I'm going to connect you. That means you're really good at networking. Presentation, as I said, talking to people, leadership, maybe you, you were working in a charity on weekends and you're really good at organizing things, that's leadership. And in blue, we have the technical skills. So coding, for instance, editing, but also doing an activity and having a certificate for it. So like scuba diving, it could be uh, being a marathonian. That's still a skill, right? You have endurance. And then being good in graphics and, and uh, logistics. 
So that's just examples. It's exhaustive. You can find a lot of examples if you actually type hard skill, digital skill, and soft skills on the internet. Your strength. What are your strengths? And try to define it, write, it, write them down, and then pick the one that should be on your CV. So defining your strength. What are you good at? What do you like doing? And what makes you stand out? Again, go around and ask friends and family, they will give you all your best attributes. Examples of, uh, of skills you could have is enthusiastics, enthusiastic, you enjoy helping people, uh, self-motivated, so you work in a team, but you also can work by yourself and you will be self-motivated. You are driven, you are focus-driven, solution-focused, adaptable, caring, passionate. This is all the keywords that employers love to hear. And of course, hardworking. Everybody wants to hire hardworking people. All right, let's think of your experience now. As we said before, you may have experience or you may lack of experience. How do we show all of this? If you have a little bit of experience, even before any professional, uh, professional one, you will be able to show it. So, as I said earlier, you may not have the work experience, but you may have done some volunteering. You may have done some intern internship. You may have worked with family, family business on the weekend. They ask you to stay at the till. Well, that's actually an experience. Okay, they didn't pay you, fair enough, but that's really a good experience. And I'm sure you will do a great job in doing the same pay job. Um, certificate, as I said earlier, just do some certificate, being online or being in presence somewhere. Just make sure that you know you have the certificate. You don't have so much to scan it, but you know the name and it can be checked. It can be uh, it can be cross checks. Okay, hobbies and extracurriculum activities. It's really interesting when you read a CV and you realize that uh, someone who is going for a job who is that is very office based is actually an, uh, an accomplished pianist or, you know, trumpet player like me. Well, that's really something new because you're like, oh, wow, I couldn't think so. You know, I didn't think that from a very serious CV, he's having some hobbies. So add it there because it would be a really good addition to the team to have this diversity of uh, passion as well when you are multiple people in a team. Experience two dates. So think of it. What did you do well? What did you do to what did you achieve all over your previous life? Um, how does it relate to the role? So you are applying for a role, but how does it really relate to it? I'm going to move on now because now you really want to put all your experience, your kiss, keys, and all that into a CV. So here is a bit of, a, of an example that you could format as a CV. And we'll see later, just the next slide, um, you're going to pick which CV you believe is the best one. Yeah, so volunteering, I have a question on the side. Volunteering means working with no pay. Um, usually it does, of course, but it does mean that you can put it in your CV. That's absolutely fine. Any work is experience, being paid or non-paid. It doesn't matter how is the remuneration, you have got the experience. So formatting your CV, you visualize your layout, you think of how it's going to look like, maybe you put it on, this, on the paper first, and then you try to find a template. Usually the template is easier than doing it from scratch, but most of you will be very good at using Google Docs or Word and all that, and you can just do it yourself as well. Think of it of promoting the content that you want to draw. So it's really about what is important there. So maybe the key skill is going to be the big section, or maybe the experience is going to be the big section. It doesn't have to be left, right, like this, right, right? It can be top to bottom, but you know that one section may be bigger because you have a lot of things to say. The order on the screen isn't set in stone. So it means that you can change it. You can actually test it by asking people, right? So you show it to, you show your CV to friends and family and you just ask them what they think about it. Let's look at this example of CVs and uh, just tell me. So the left-hand side or the right-hand side, what, which one do you think is the strongest? 
the strongest in terms of format and why. So which one do you like better? The one from Fatima Allen or the one from Harry, Harry Jones? It doesn't really matter the content. You can see that on the left-hand side is just some uh, lorem ipsum in Latin so that you can't read the, the, the details. They're all coming from uh, from a free um, free image website anyway, so it means they don't exist. They are not real people. Which one do you think? So let's wait for a few. We have left, left. Okay, that's kind of right. If we look at the right hand side, there's a little bit of a distraction, right? There's some flowers, some lotus flower over there. Why is that? The picture could be okay. The profile. Although he's got flowers as well, that's funny. Um, so think of it of like being clean. Um, why is it the left? Oh, someone is saying the right. That's really good, Sarah. So please tell us why the right hand side, because it could be that you you found something, and I I have found something on the right hand side that is actually quite good. Um, so think of like, is it clean? Is it professional? Is it easy to read? And that's the thing I found on the right hand side. Are the sections very clear? So they are very labeled. Contact info, yeah, it's easy to find as well on the in, in both, but I do like the one on the top because it's always on the top. You just see the contact and that's it. What I'd like on the right hand side is that the sections have a bold font, so it's really separated. And also, of course, it's only one page. So let's talk about a one page. Not always easy to, to do, right? Well organized, yes. So we want to write something that is clear, concise, and uh, we want to be transparent about the gaps on your CV. Why gaps? Imagine that you have six months, there was no activity, but there is something that you were doing, right? However, you are a bit embarrassed. You can, oh, I, I'm not gonna put it there because actually I didn't work, but be honest about it be yourself and just say, I was caring for a family member. I went traveling for six months because employers, we actually like the authenticity of saying like, oh, wow, this person went partying for six months and now they are, they, are, they are ready. They really want to get a job. And that makes sense. Whereas if there is a gap, it's kind of like, mm, okay, what's going on here? It's too easy for the interviewer, if you go to the interview process, to say, okay, tell me now, what have you been doing between this and that? And uh, yes, yeah, second or third opinion, but I've already said it multiple times, just go, uh, go around and ask people, ask your grandmother, ask your, your parents, they will tell you what they think. And of course they are family, so they will always hire you. I remember my uh, family members saying, oh, if it was me, I would give you the job. Uh, so try to find someone who is, uh, who is a good opinion. <laughs> All right, let's find, uh, let's have a look if there are any questions. I think uh, Nad is a really good job and uh, the, the chat is going well. So we're going to move on because we have more questions posed at least later. Let's go to the second topic now, write a cover letter. And after that, we're going to look at uh, how to find a job. So writing a cover letter, we are all a bit off putting, right? It's really, it can be really difficult to write a, a, a cover letter. And uh, the big problem is the famous white page, the white page of the, uh, of the writer. So you know you have to justify why you want this job. And they ask you specifically sometimes for a cover letter. And you know you have to write and you want to be yourself, but you kind of like, oh, if I write as myself, I'm not going to be understood. So it's really scary. So how about having a methodology to do that? It may help a little bit. So you need to sell yourself. Um, it's You need to find, to write this cover letter as a great way to showcase your skills, your experience in more detail, but you're also attaching the CVs. So we are going to repeat, it is true. We are going to repeat a little bit of things, but mainly we're going to highlight what they want to see for this special job. Because our CV may be talking about a long range of uh, and date of activities, but the cover letter is going to be quite precise. So you've seen the numbers here, I'm not going to repeat again, but just be really wary, be, be mindful that they do check cover letter and 40% uh, right, will ask for it. 
So be mindful that this is something that happens. So be prepared. So great that you joined today. All right, let's go for it. We have some blocks. So we have defined five blocks. Yes, you can see six because the first one is just hello. So five blocks. Let's go through one, through them one by one. So the first one, of course, we're going to say hello. Which one do we decide? Is it hi, hello, there? So it's culturally appreciated. It depends who you're writing for. If it, is it a corporation? Is it an international company? It will depend. But more likely, hi is very familiar, right? It's a bit informal. Hello is the friendly one and it's not too old fashioned. And the there, like there, sir, there, madam, is kind of classic. So this one will work as well. Um, I would say that uh, using two, for instance, is a little bit informal. When you say two um, head of HR, for instance, human resources, it's a bit informal and it's quite inappropriate because it means it's just like I'm sending it to the letterbox. If you know the person who is hiring, and nowadays with social media, we may know that. We know that on LinkedIn, for instance, we may have the name of the person who is sending the job. Then use that and uh, it would be good to say their name of the person. If you don't know, you can still say for the attention of, and then you put the name, which is the hiring manager, the title of the person. Um, to mention anyone you know, you could use it. So let's say that this uh, job application, you have been sent or forwarded by someone. Well, make it into the introduction. So you could say who you are, of course, why you are interested, and uh, you heard you got this uh, job offer from somebody who works in the company, from a friend, from a, a family member. Just be open about how you got it, but also how you received it, which website, because these websites are everywhere. The same job offer may appear in 25 different websites. So be clear about what it could be. Okay, do we have time? I'm going to do a quick one because we have two minutes. All right. So example of a introduction. I have recently completed an IT solution apprenticeship. I'd like to apply for the junior system analyst role. So you repeat what it is at name of company. Then I found the advert on for this role on monster.com. Let's say this is a good place to reference anyone you know at the company. So make sure you just include it, right? So you say, I heard about this uh, advert because my cousin forwarded it to me and she's been working in for your company for two years and she really enjoys it. Brilliant. Make sure that the cousin is happy that you mention her because that could be uh, a little bit of a, a problem, but it works quite well. Okay. Second one, if we say that we have five paragraphs, so second one is summarizing yourself. So. You explain what's important to you. We know who you are now. You know, we know what you are applying for, why it's important to you so that we understand why you are the ideal candidate. So it's really what we call the power paragraph because in this paragraph, you're going to sell you and what you are about. So back to the strength that you defined earlier, this is where you're going to put them but you don't put them as just bullet list like you would do on a CV. You would really explain them in a, in a verbal way. So example of this could be that you are, you've just finished an internship for uh, you know, charity and paid work, and you realize that you were really good at time management. That's how you are, that's what you, you do. And then what do you enjoy? Well, you enjoy helping people and uh, you can continue like this. Keep it for like two, three sentences based on the information that you have within the, the job offer. Right, now let's go into the problem and solution. So you know what is the job, the job description, and you know what kind of language they, they are using. So do your research, do your company research, try to find out what problems they are having. Because if they are having a problem, you could be the solution. So think of uh, reading their website, finding the latest news, the challenges in the industry, not just the company, go broader. If you know that, let's take an example, it's an energy company that is hiring, you know that is a big energy crisis, when it's good to use this and to say that, uh, that you may be, uh, you may be a, a solution for that. 
Right, list showcase where you could find um, problems. So you can actually develop this and talk a little bit about that. Your achievement, remember that on the CV, you're going to list all your achieve achievement, all your language, et cetera. But this is not a reputation. So it's really optional because otherwise it's gonna to be too long and just like a CV, right? And CV, you should keep it to two pages. So cover letter, we can't have it more than one pages either. So look at the job offer, the job description. And if you realize that it's a job for a country with a special language, just mention the language. So they don't even have to go to the CV to find out that you speak this language. Um, mention your hobbies, interests, but again, relevant to the, the application. And finally, you, you finish with a sign up so that you can praise a little bit the company and you really show that you are excited. So example that you have on the screen, it's really about show them that you're looking forward to hearing from them and, uh, and making sure that they know you have put your contact information and they can contact you anytime. Because if you don't finish a cover letter with just a thank you or regards, best regard, etc., it just feels like, um, like a stamp, right? You, you don't write a letter on just a, a post step. Be cordial. All right. You need to tailor your application to the role. So we talked about this. Make sure that it's always linked to the application form. So you read the application. You know what it is. Your CV, it would be great to tailor it each time, but it's a lot of work. But a cover letter, you can tailor it. So make sure that you have things like a portfolio. So you have a link on your CV and it opens to a portfolio. You have a list of skills, but the skills that you are mentioning in your cover letter are exactly what the application is going to need, right? And then qualification. If you are not going to use your health and safety qualification, you still keep it in the CV, but you don't put it in your cover letter. So they will see it in the CV, and it doesn't really matter if you're going to do a job as a computer analyst to have a health and safety. So if you're applying, for instance, for apprenticeship, part-time job, make sure that you also showcase the skills, um, present uh, your ability to work in the best possible light, range of... Uh, uh, samples that you could show. You could have a portfolio, as I said, but online, or maybe you can you can explain that you will be bringing samples of your work. All this can be done in the cover letter. So example of cover letter, start something really strong so you can really, within the first sentence, already have highlighting words that is going to stay in the brain straight away of the reader. Okay, so here you can see in yellow that we very quickly see the current employment, the, the application we want to, to make, because of course they have more than one role, and then how they got, how they heard about the job. Second one, we had the summary. So we try to summarize ourselves. Um, so I would describe myself. So it's very clear that when I'm reading this, I'm expecting keywords as my description. So friendly, helpful, patient, all the things that you may not have worked with, but you know you are known for that, right? So again, you've been doing some church work, you are part of a community, everybody finds you friendly, helpful, patient, use that for CV, cover letter, you really uh, take pride of offering a great level of customer services if you had the job. Problem and solution. Again, you have studied the business, so you know that uh, you will cope you will cope well under stress because it's a business that's always constantly moving and always challenging, and people will tend to do long hours. Well, actually, you're really good under stress, and you will be fine with it. And then dealing with a range of customers on a daily basis, so you're used to that. Again, you place the experience very quickly. Achievement. We talked a lot about volunteering today, so this could be the place to make it. But if you have certification, you also can do that because you know um, I enjoy having uh, keeping up, up to date with my certification, so that uh, the employer is going to see them in the CV again. I le enjoy learning. I keep learning by myself. I always enjoy uh, enroll into short part part time courses. All this is really nice to mention it in cover letter. 
And finally, the thing about praising the business and saying thanks for the consideration and making sure that uh, they can contact you. Okay, let's pause for the question because next we're going to look how to search for a job. Let me check. We are all good. You've been uh, you've been still actively in the chat, having a nice conversation. So that's great. Thank you so much for the uh, the um, acknowledgement when I uh, when I talk about some topics. Uh, Sarah and Yao, that's really great. Thank you for that. Okay, let's get ready for your job search. That may be the one that you will have questions because uh, we are going to give you some tips on exactly where to go. Um, or how to find it really, because there are so many options. So before you apply for the job, you really need to understand the opportunities in the market. But to understand the opportunities, you need to understand your values, your values and your career goals, because your values and career goals are going to match the opportunity. It would be better, otherwise you'll be really bored into this job. So check first your digital footprint. Digital footprint means you've been living for a few years, right? Like all of us, and you've been living digital already. So you left a footprint. Every time we step foot in a room, we leave some prints and it's the same for digital. So you need to check all the contents that you have shared, all the pages that you have followed, the accounts you have followed maybe, um, all the reviews that you wrote, things are going to leave a trace. And surprise, surprise, employer are going to ch check on this. Some employers will check on this. So it's good to have a health check. So we're going to focus on the content that you can edit and retract. Because of course, there are some content online that you may not be able to edit and retract. You can always contact the, the company, the website, and see what you could do. So check your digital footprint. But the main question is, okay, why? Why would I bother? Well, 90% of recruiters are checking social media presence to learn about you. And I give you another tip is that actually they don't do it manually. They're going to use some tools that automatically are going to check on social media. So as soon as your name or your email is being uh, tracked in their system, then you will do a search and it will extract um, even the, uh, the the trend of how you are communicating on the web. And you could find out things like, is this a good person or a bad person? Is this person complaining a lot on social media or is she genu genuinely always happy? So after the employee referral, it's number three for uh, recruiting tools is to go on social media and find people online. So that's great because you can be headhunted by employers, but that can be a negative effect as you can imagine. So that's why you need to really look at your digital, uh, digital footprint. So once you have looked at your footprint, you went to all your accounts and tried to, um, to clean a little bit and be uh, wary of what is visible, you need to create your, a, a better image of yourself. Self. So we call it the personal brand, right? You as an individual, you have a personal brand that you can show. So you need to reevaluate how you use social media. So it means that maybe before your social media was fully public and you would just post pictures, holiday, drinking parties, all that, it was fully public. But now you are searching for a job and maybe the pictures when you were having a little bit too much fun may not be to every liking. So create your LinkedIn profile if you don't have it already, and then join discussion network online, share content that is relevant and relevant to your future industry. So of course, if you're, if you're working into um, online training like, uh, like we do, well, maybe you are part of groups that talk about training and talk about technology and digital skills. So show that you really care for this. So LinkedIn, for instance, is a, is a good example at the, the bottom of your profile. It will show all the groups that you are part of. So start being a member of groups that are really relevant. So if you care for a CEO and you care for another president of, the, of a country, just click on it as long as it's relevant to your, um, to your industry. 
to make sure you remove if it's not, if it's uh, damaging your, your personal brand. Now, think big when you go and search for opportunities. Think big, it means that you, you have to dare to dream. You have to be really bold about your goals and your plan. Because when you think about what to do next, you are not going to just think like, oh, I can get um, uh, a, a my next job just at the corner. You have to be really bigger. And the bigger you, the bigger you get, you will get in, in mid ground. So you need to, for that to identify your trends. What's going on in the market? Especially now, we have what we call the fourth industrial revolution. It is coming. The fourth industrial revolution is how technology like AI, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, and digital devices, so all these digital tools are going to merge so that they can help people work, live, and interact better. So at first, it can be a little bit overwhelming and scary, but actually, it's really good because it's going to impact job available and the skills required to do this job. It's all linked to STEM project, STEM subject, right? So science and technology. It's all about coding, design, software development. Now, of course, we are here to give you digital skills. So we would love if you look into STEM subjects, but it is going to open the horizon and the opportunities for much more than we even have now, than we even have in the list of, uh, of digital skills. So do your research, do your research in what roles you could have, what are the roles of tomorrow? And I'm not sure if you heard in the, in the past few weeks, but there are some new roles already opening in the artificial intelligence sphere to train the bots and all that. So have a look, do your research. So let's think, which tool could you use now, right now to look for jobs? And I would love to hear again in the chat if you can um, enter some of the website that you use, that you heard of, if you haven't used them, how would you look for a job? I know just website, it could be social media, it could be, it could be what your friends and family told you. So you need to explore a wealth of job opportunities online. So it means that, yes, of course, search engine. The first thing we might do is just to go on the search engine and say, I'm looking for this special job title in this special location, and maybe from part-time or full-time or remote, et cetera. Use job boards. Job boards are still very much active and they will continue to do so because it means you are inside a website and we just talk about jobs. So that's how we're going to focus on the topic, right? And finally, professional networks. So professional networks are people who are really actively in their work. So go and network over there. It's the best way to also hear about jobs. So you're going to connect to people and those people may reach out and talk about what they are currently hiring or next month, I have an opening for a, uh, a analyst and things like this. LinkedIn is really good at doing this. You have lots and lots of groups on LinkedIn that you can join. People talk about the technology, the skill, the very, very special niche. And when there is a job opening, they will post it over there. So it's a great way to connect with people directly and ask them like, oh, is there any opening? Can I apply for a job the next time there is? Another tool that uh, we would like to um, you to explore is called Google Job Boards. So of course it's a Google tool, so it's free and you will be able to search by job title, by specialization, by industry, location. When was the, the job posted? Was it in the past three days or longer than this? because even a job that has been there for two weeks, you will be able to apply again. Keep an eye on the key information. So for that, it means that we're going to daily look at the task and responsibilities that are listed in the description. So we're going to understand what they want, the specific skills so that you can reply exactly for them, but also so that you can filter out. You don't want to have a job that you can't do. If a role doesn't fit 100% with your values, is this something that you need to learn, that you need to grow 
so that you can then apply in a few months. Maybe it's your dream job, but maybe you need to learn something before. Look, of course, at the salary and location and your personal development. It's not just technical development that you want to do. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a bit. We have five minutes left, but we are still on track. Don't worry, we're going to have uh, finished right on time. Okay, we um, choose the role that match your values. So I talked about values. Values are super important. You need to learn your own values. So you need to, be this, to do this little exercise of thinking how we want to live our life. We're focusing on values, right? So values is like a compass. It's somewhere you want to go, you want to move towards in a desired direction. And the goal is the other one. It is the other one. The goal is something that we want to reach a goal, but once we reached it, we are moving on because we want to continue to the values and we need to find a new goal. So think of what is the core value that you want, that you want for you when doing a job. And you have some values that you're not going to move away from in your next job. And all this brings us to create your plan of success by using the SMART indicator. So SMART indicator, you may have crossed it before. We use it a lot in multiple um, industry and, uh, and domain, especially digital marketing. So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time bound. All of this example, right? We want to have, we want to work as a finance at a startup. That's very specific. We don't want to work in corporate. We want to work in a, in a startup and exactly at this job. It has to be measurable because I want to, I will have to achieve this when I receive a job offer. Achievable, it has to be feasible, right? And then realistic. If you don't have knowledge to be a finance manager, it's not really realistic to, to aspire for the, for the role. And time bond. It's like, well, when do you want to be a finance manager? How long will it take you? Because then you will bring your uplearning, your upskilling, and you will plan it for, for reaching this, uh, this goal towards your value again. So this is my final question to you, really. What are your career goals for the next year? You may have goals for two years, five years. What are the ones for next year? What are you thinking of doing? And it could be that your career goals is not yet to change, but is to build enough in your CV so that you have enough skills, you have enough, enough experience, and next year you'll be able to write your, your beautiful cover letter. Okay, before giving you the next step in one minute, is there a limit to the number of our soft skills? Again, there is no limit, but if you put 100 skis, it's going to take the whole space of the CV. So it's really related to the application you are going to, uh, to apply for. Um, are there any social media apps where I can join in discussion? So I guess this one is where do I join any kind of online discussion, online forum, so that I can talk about a specific topic. And it could be that a specific topic is recruitment, by the way, how to improve my CV and all that. Yes, there are. The first one I have in mind is that you open LinkedIn and then you search for the specific topic and you join a group. What are your next steps? So now you've seen how to build your CV, write a cover letter and search for a job on the web. So your next step is that you can also participate or join a career certificate so that you will have more certificate to your portfolio. You can, um, you can have things like data analytics, UX design, project management. All this is in the address, career set UK. Um, and you will have this in your portfolio. You don't really have to be UK, it's preferable, but you can, or you can all register. Thank you so much for joining. I, uh, we will be there a few minutes in the chat if you have additional questions and to send you the feedback form and all the links that you needed. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to present you this topic today and I hope to see you soon in our next webinar. Have a good day.